everybody. Welcome back. It is another episode of DadCast. I'm JP. He is Nick. How are you, Nick? I'm good. My uh, my dreams about questioning something just got crushed, so I'm, uh, okay. <laughs> we, I'm we still can, good. <laughs> we can discuss that here in this episode. Uh, today on the show, man, we've got an amazing guest. He is a writer, producer, showrunner for some amazing TV shows that I know you are very well aware of and some old school favorite I say old school. That makes I'm, I'm kind of aging ourselves here. They're really not that old, but some of my favorite movies, uh, example, Demolition Man back in the day. He is Mr. Peter Lankoff. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm great. Actually, really nice to be on this. And uh, thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. We thank you, man. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Um, now, as a rite of passage, the very first question we always ask right here on DadCast is, are you a dad? Yeah, I've <laughs> been a dad for a long time. <laughs> All I right. Kids. I have four kids, so, yeah. Four kids. Awesome. Uh, what uh, Names, ages, boys, girls? So the stock. youngest, I have two boys, two girls. Uh, um, two boys, uh, uh, 14 and 17. Jack's the youngest, 14. Sam's 17. And I have twin daughters uh, that are both 27 years old, named oh. Courtney and Ariel. Very different uh uh, personalities very different in terms of looks, everything. Um, but those are the four. Okay. Now, my first question, that or second question, I should say, right off the bat, then is um, in your experience, because Nick and I are both going through it as we speak. How did you get through that fourteen to nineteen years with the girls, <laughs> and 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 it was was your experience like ours very difficult? You know, they decide to hate us, and dad's just not you know an important part of their life, and they, you know they they want to you know spread their wings and fly. And how did you get through that? How was it for you? Well, I I I, I have a really really good relationship with my girls. I I would say that. Uh, before the boys came along, I really was a girl dad and spent yeah. a lot of time with them. Uh, when they were growing up um, in those early years, I actually was focusing more on screenwriting. And um, so I was working from home a lot. I wasn't going into an office. Uh, so I was around for a lot of the formative years of them sort of getting their personalities in in, in sorts. Um but yeah, I mean, it's hard when they, you know, when uh, as they get older and they become teenagers and, um, you know, there's cliques in schools and there's peer pressure and there's boyfriends and all those things. I, um, I got lucky that I was able to navigate it uh, uh, semi-successfully. I, I, I think successfully. I don't want to, you know, um, say everything was was easy. Um but yeah, it's it. I think they leaned more on their mom with certain issues, yeah. um, and uh, uh, I think I had it a little easier than she did. Um, but uh, yeah, it's tough. But I'm actually finding that comparatively with my boys, uh, the girls were fairly easy. Uh, boys a little tougher. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, it's that it's that testosterone, it's them sort of becoming men and marking their territory uh, a lot different than my girls. And um, and uh, I think we're doing a good job and they're they're great kids, but very different. Uh, and um, it's a it's 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 a. a, a you know, bigger wrangling job when it comes to boys, at least in my experience so far. Yeah. You know, you're not, that's pretty accurate. I, yeah, yeah. I, I have also noticed too, in myself, I have an 18 year old daughter, a 12 year old son and a nine year old daughter. Um, the nine year old is my little princess, my little baby girl. Yeah, she could do no wrong, even though she is the most feisty, full of sass child that I have but I notice myself treating her different than I do my son. And I wouldn't say it's necessarily better or worse, but I'm softer with her. I'm a little bit more rugged with, with the son and the way I talk with him, the way I, I, I treat him, the way he's punished, the way he's taught in all aspects. And it's starting right now. Nick, Nick was privy to it to a, a couple nights ago. Um, he's 12 <laughs> and he's starting to, 
exactly what you said. He, he kind of marking his own territory. He's on the precipice of puberty. Man, that's a difficult sentence to say. The precipice yeah. of puberty. That should be a good band name for a movie. <laughs> but anyway, that's I'm getting off track. Sounds like a great book about uh, right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Write that down, Nick. Um, but it, it's getting. It's starting to. A little bit of tug of war happening with the boy, which I haven't noticed with the girls. Um, so yeah, I think you're pretty accurate when it comes to that. How are so you I think they're seven- really just to go back for a second, I think boys they really are testing you. Um, it's almost like the wild kingdom is like you know, they're <laughs> testing you to see if you're really the dominant male in the house. Uh, and uh, you find they find any weakness and they're taking over that position, that, that spot. Right. Um, I find that I have very strong, they're very strong willed boys. Uh, they have their opinions and, uh, um, and it's very, it's, it's harder at this age right now at 14, 17 to parent them than it did my girls. Yeah, well, you know, also your girls, that was 10 years ago, right? Give or yeah. take. Um, social media was around, but it obviously wasn't nearly as just a part of everyone's yeah. life as it was yeah, back then. True. And um, I don't want to blame that on why it's getting <laughs> difficult, but it certainly is not, not, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I hear you, man. We're all right there with you. It's 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 <laughs> difficult. It is tough. What so is, this is like a support group, really? It's yeah, it's not a podcast, it's for us to support each other. I love absolutely. it. Absolutely. Well, exactly. it's it's all of that intertwined in everything, you and know. I, and I keep I keep starting over so we can keep this going forever. <laughs> yeah, Nick. That's, that's the plan there. <laughs> Nick, I don't know if you're aware, but he has 873 children, and uh the 873rd <laughs> uh just came to us last month, two months yeah, ago. Wow, six weeks ago, yeah. Mazel tov. congratulations. Thanks. So, yeah, yeah, it's it, only it, seven actually, but yeah, only seven. you know, eight hundred seven. What's it? Yeah, once yeah, you get past you know, three or Nick, four, it's all the yeah, same. Nick, yeah, I've got Nick Cannon to look up to. I've got to, you know, try to, try to <laughs> That's catch your up role model that. and my my role model. <laughs> I aspire to be like him. Yeah, if you aspire to be like him, you still got a few more kids le- uh, left. A few more kids and a few million yeah. dollars to make. It. <laughs> That's funny. I was I was at Disneyland a couple months ago with my lady and we're walking through the park and there was a section where there are, I'm not even kidding. There was hundreds and hundreds of strollers and she walks by and she's like, Oh, Nick Cannon's here just under her breath as we walk by. <laughs> That's a great joke. I'm like, well done part. lady. That was that good. Was, that was fantastic. <laughs> That's a great joke. So and being in the position that you are, the job you have, what you do and as a career, um, has the time come where your kids are, do they show any interest in film TV or anything like that? And if not, um, are they going to be like, Hey dad, throw me in one of your flicks. Well, first of all, I, I, the funny thing is all four kids have probably not seen anything I've done from beginning to end. What? Uh, oh. Yeah. And it's probably if I uh, shove it on them, uh, um, it it's, they still wouldn't, you know, they still, I, I, I just allow them to sort of like find my stuff if they want to. Right. Uh, I, I don't force them to watch anything that I've done. Um, you know, I had a movie a few years ago come out called RIPD. Uh, yeah. It really was uh, for kids. Uh, I thought, okay, finally I've done something that my kids, because at that age, you know, this is going back, I think it came out in uh, 2003. Um or 2013, sorry. Um, I thought, oh, they're perfect age to watch this. They, they had no interest. All their friends saw it except them. Um, <laughs> I just had a sequel to that come out on Netflix. They haven't seen it. My son, Sam, who's 17, um, I think through osmosis somehow found, uh, and, and a lot through his mom, he found a love for photography and filmmaking um and uh, so he's been doing a lot of that and he's gotten a lot of paid jobs doing that and he's really really talented i think more talented than i was at that age in terms of like uh the ability to express myself artistically mm-hmm. um he's really really good at his at his craft and he wants to go to film school but he doesn't re- he doesn't come to me um 
for, um, he goes to his mom more for help than me, ironically. And he waits until he's on the verge of finishing something and then he'll come to me. Um, almost the way, you know, I'm like the executive producer in the family. Like he'll show it to me when he's ready. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he'll develop it with his mom uh, until that, until that moment. Um, but uh, no, my kids have not, other than Sam, they haven't really showed interest in the entertainment business or what I do. Uh, I think they've only come to the sets a few times. They weren't eager to do it. You know, I'd have to lure them if there was a food truck one day or, <laughs> but, um, but it's not, it's Man, not I, for I, them. I, it's just was my job, you know? And yeah, yeah they don't, uh, again, I, I just, I just went, I, I had a, a, a movie come out last week or two weeks ago, like this Liam Neeson movie, like a big, you know, it's like a, a semi big movie. And uh, I said, Hey, let's go all of us and watch it. And none of them had interest. At all, I would see. I would just call Paulie Shore and be like, "Hey, Paulie, come on over. <laughs> let's leave son-in-law out on the table, let's yeah. have dinner. Let, let, let you know, it's funny. They haven't happen. seen. Yeah, they haven't even seen <laughs> son-in-law. They haven't seen any of I, those. I, man, I must have watched that movie a hundred times growing up. That's like, man, <laughs> that that is my that's my teenage years right there. Well, we were, you know, we were almost. Te you know, we made. I think Paulie and I. When we made, I was like 25, he was 24. I mean, we made it, we were, we were like kids, uh, yeah. given, you know, money to make a movie and just, I can't went nuts. imagine so, the amount of fun you guys must have had too. It's like, you, great cast, just like, it just seems like a ton of fun. Jury duty. It was a lot of fun because we yeah. shot, we actually shot on location in uh, Visalia, uh, which is, you know, a little north of uh, LA. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, so we were all, you know, staying at the same hotel and, you know, we were kids. Um, I think Carla Gugino, who, who played, you know, um, uh, the, the uh, sort of lead female role, uh, it was like her second film. Um, oh, wow. Uh, Tiffany Thyssen, uh, yeah. <laughs> what she was, I think she was the, the veteran of everybody because she was on a TV show. Um, I think it was like I think Saved, Saved by, by the, the Bell. Bell. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And she was like the veteran of every of you know in terms of talent. Um but yeah, and Paul, you know, it's funny you mentioned Polly, because Polly and I have been really close friends since ninety one, whenever and we shot it in ninety two. So yeah, go goes back go him he, he and I go back a long way. Nick, so awesome. a little bit of uh, professional advice. That was your in to ask the question you always ask yeah, of gonna, every I'm, single guest that comes on the show. Yeah, I've learned from from my from Brian. Wait till later, shoot an email or a text, and ask. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Uh, so, in the course of your career, Peter, um, how much time was spent away from your children, if any, um, that you would see? as abnormal from the average dad out there. Is that, you know, does that apply to you? I think, um, well, I always made it a, a practice to be home for dinner. Uh, nice. okay. And that was always important. And sometimes I'd go back, to, I would work in my home office after dinner, but I always made sure I was home for dinner. I always made sure that I was there in the morning to see them go to school. So uh, it didn't mean that I only worked nine to five it just meant that i was in my house those hours or you know that that moment right. when they left the school and then you know dinner time um there are times when i was out of town uh whether you know for long periods of time but i was never gone for more than a month when i shot a pilot uh, which you know i didn't do that many times um uh, when I was in, when we were doing Hawaii Five O, I used to go to Hawaii one week a month for the first six, seven years. But you know, with FaceTime and you know, you know, I, I, I was always around. I never, I never was gone for long periods of time. Um, and also made sure. And they're not. My kids are not sports kids, so it wasn't like I was missing soccer on the weekend or. Right. Um, but I was there for anything significant. Um, 
if they had something that was going on. Um, but the dinners was the most important. I, I was there for that. So they had some sort of sense of who their dad was and we got to like chat a little bit. So good stuff. Now I do got to ask, cause I, uh, I, I fall into that category. Um, I'm the youngest of four and there's a 10 year gap between the next youngest and my, and my siblings. Um, and Nick has a baby. So I'm assuming something's going on with that. It's just going to be <laughs> you and I for a sec. Apparently, um, <laughs> With your children? Oh, there she is. There's baby Sophie. Well, she's not going to wake up. Oh, oh there's a good smile. look there at that. Oh. There she is. Yeah. Brace oh. that neck, Nick. Brace that neck. Come on. Oh, my God. Debut. All right. Bye, guys. Thank God my wife isn't on because she, <laughs> she would just take over that. <laughs> um, With the your kids being the, uh, the twin girls are older by 10 years. Yeah. Um, What was it? The, was there... Was that on purpose? That age gap, or it just is this how things worked out? No, a different life? a different wife in between. No, just okay, two wives. Um, that would make sense. Okay, yeah, that kind of falls in the category with Nick. Did you know yeah. Nick was fixed? He was done. <laughs> Stick a fork. Oh, in really? Him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, well, Nick, Reverse. why don't you tell the story? Go ahead. Yeah. So I uh, met my now wife and uh, got married, and she wanted to have kids because she didn't have any kids. So. I got unfixed and we went through IVF and it was definitely like crazy. It was, it was a lot, it's a lot different going through IVF and it is just having a baby the normal way. There's a lot of stuff that you don't hear from the guy's perspective on it, that it yeah. is, it's tough. It's weird. It's, it's all kinds of crazy stuff, but we've got a two-year-old and our new baby Sophie out of the wow. IVF. And the two-year-old has most recently via social media which for the love it or hate it in this case i'm gonna love it has graduated to gi joe's nick i'm yes. so proud for you i'm yes. so proud for you dude I'm oh so really happy. oh man we opened up gi joe's i so when i found out i was having a boy i started buying gi joe's like crazy so i have like literally probably 30 or 40 gi joe but you guys. have the new you have the new ones not the not the they're, the, they're the, the yeah the knockoff ones they're not yeah okay. if i had the originals i would not be opening those those <laughs> That'd be my retirement. But yeah, they're the knockoffs of the old 80s G.I. Joe. So we unboxed a bunch last night and we've been playing with them and he's just super stoked on it. Years so. ago, a friend of mine bought me the same G.I. Joe that I had as a kid and it's on my desk and it is like a, my prized possession. I That was growing up playing with gi joe's was the coolest thing ever so now good are we for talking you, the full size ones or the, the full action size. figure no, the little ones oh, yeah. no now i'm talking like in 60s and 70s okay yeah i'm talking yeah. about like bearded gi joe that the beard yeah. felt like a real beard there we go right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well that's that's great i wish someone hey if anyone ever happens to if anyone listen to me of course <laughs> someone's going to see this show we get thousands upon thousands of views on every single episode if one of you watching or listening whatever feel it in your heart to get jp his childhood favorite toy that would be an original unboxed optimus prime transformer okay i'm a kid from the 80s i was six <laughs> so i've got a real quick we'll go funny story about 80s toys my cousin and I had like we were big time into sports card collecting, GI Joe, Star Wars, and Ninja Turtles. Like we had everything you possibly could imagine. We had one that we played with, one that was unboxed. Our moms decided after we grew up and left the houses and got married, had oh, no. kids, it was a good <laughs> idea to go through the old room at my cousin's house and sell everything at twenty five cents an action figure. At the time, this was probably like twenty years ago. One of our, we had a Darth Vader with a weird special um, uh, coat, coat thing he had on. It was like a very rare one. It was worth like 30 grand at the time. Cape? Yep, a cape. That's the word. She sold it for 25 cents. We had oh. King Griffey, we had 10 oh, King Griffey Jr. God. upper deck rookie cards in perfectly mint condition that we had sent off to get graded. And they were like 9.8s. Sold them for a buck a piece. Yeah. It's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still don't talk to my mom. By the way, I was the one who bought. I was the one who bought all that stuff. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> he'll sell. He'll gladly sell it back to you for no, your. I remember a few now. years back, we go to his house with his old parents, his parents' old house, and we're like, "Man, I wonder if all that stuff's still in the room." Because we got kind of like that. The idea was just to let it sit there and like we'll pick it up when we're older. And 
go through it, divvy it up and have an auction. And we go back and it's the room is empty. We're like, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> Call our moms. Hey, oh yeah, we had a yard sale years ago. Oh my God. Yeah, that's terrible. My, I, uh, my, we, I collected comics all through the 70s. And I had a great comic book collection. I also had all the original Mad magazines and Crack magazine and Plop. And um, and when I moved to L.A., I put them all in garbage bags and um, uh, put them in my uh, uh, near the furnace of my house. In uh, And I thought no one's going to go near the furnace, but I hid them behind the furnace. And... Um, uh, my mom called me one day and said, uh, I found all your old comic books. I gave them away because they were near the furnace uh, and I thought they would burn up. Um, even though I like made sure they wouldn't, right. uh, she gave them all away. So that was, you know, probably $100,000 worth of comic books um, oh. that, that she just gave away thinking that I had mistakenly put them in the wrong place. So I, I feel you, uh, fill you oh is this just a terrible yeah. terrible terrible I, I hope our moms go back and watch this and learn how to parent better <laughs> <laughs> or dads you know watching yeah, exactly. this you know don't throw your kids stuff away and if <laughs> if you got to you know run a u-haul or a, a storage locker or something and put yeah. that stuff away a, a phone call first <laughs> would have yeah. been great that's no, probably text the these days these days yeah. it's easier to not make these mistakes too yeah um I want to take you back 28 years, Peter, give or take a few months to that fateful day. You were notified somehow, some way that you were in fact going to become a dad. Can you recall the emotions of that day? Yeah, I remember, I actually remember I was in our a bedroom and I was on the floor, like just like kicking my feet up in the air. I was so excited. Nice. Um, I got married. I got married at 25. We, we decided not to try to have kids for a few years because we just wanted to travel. And, you know, I was starting my career or I was like in my career, but, you know, I was trying to build my career. Um, and then we spent about a year trying to have a, a kid. And when it happened, uh, I was like, like insanely happy. I, I, so I just, you know, and it also was perfect because I think I had just turned 30 and I, and it was like, perfect. I, it was exactly sort of how you would plan it. Gotcha. No fear at all? No, I mean, I was terrified. Look, you know, here's the thing about, you know, being in the entertainment business, it is so scary because um, nothing's guaranteed. You know, uh, and I don't have a trade like I, you know, I can't take a piece of wood and build a table or I, you know, I can't, you know, uh, take a welding torch and 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 build something. All I have is what's really in my head. So that's where my income comes from. So this, you know, knowing that you're going to have kids and that responsibility and you're going to have to start saving for college. That's terrifying for sure. Yeah especially being in this business, it's like, you know, you don't know if you're going to not work, you know, after your last project. Um, so yeah, it was terrifying, but I just, you know, somebody told me many, many years ago, bet on yourself. I always bet on myself. So, um, I felt that if I, you know, with, with the kids, I'll, I'll figure out a way, even if I had to go and like teach screenwriting, whatever I needed to do to support my family, I would have done. I, I just was, excited to have kids and you know terrified about supporting them but yeah i think everybody goes through that that I, that that that's not unique i agree um i would disagree yeah. however on the fact you just made a statement says you don't have a trade uh-uh the fact that you can put pen to paper and put out just beautiful pieces of work that turn into what they turn into my friend that is absolutely a trade and an art um, in my book. Well, so thank you. I, I would well, never, you. I would never say that one again. All right. So 28 years ago, you find out yeah. you're having kids nine yes. months later. Were you in the room? Were you there for the birth? And how was that? Well, for it you? Was, first of all, it wasn't nine months. They, uh, they were born premature. Okay. Okay. Uh, my two, you know, we, uh, my wife and I, at the time we, we had gone in for a regular checkup and, uh, the doctor said, you know, baby a wasn't getting enough food. Baby B was taking, 
all the food. And if you want a chance for both of them to survive, you should give birth. You should, we should take out the babies today. Okay. Uh, that was two months early. And I, you know, we ran to, we literally ran to the hospital and they took the babies out that day. Uh, one was one pound, 14 ounces. The other one was two eleven. They both were in incubators for, a, uh, one was for uh, uh, four weeks. The other was for six weeks. I mean, it was scary, uh, yeah. terrifying because, you know, I was hoping, you know, I sort of knew when you have twins that you could, you know, have them a little bit early, but I didn't think two months early. And the, the one pound, 14 ounce was tiny. I remember holding her, I don't know if you could see my fingers, but I don't know where I got to, like literally holding her neck, like, Oof, or yeah. her back of her head yeah. with my fingers like this. She was so small and we were scared out of our minds. And I would sit there by, you know, the incubator drawing pictures and I would put them at the top of the incubator and like the characters would say, breathe, um, literally just survive, do whatever you can to make it to the next day. It was scary. Um, Wow. So I we I don't think I celebrated having kids for a few months at least. Yeah. Well, that's it's you're know, playing it safe, and that's absolutely scary. Yeah. Um yeah. now fast forward a few years. Uh is does baby A or B still uh eating more food than her sister? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is she uh, is she demanding more? No, no. Their <laughs> their personalities did not uh um did not uh, connect at all with uh, what they were in the in the womb. Uh, they're both very generous uh, individuals. And are they, uh, are they identical? No, okay. fraternal, very fraternal. different. Um, but you would think that you would think that um, baby B would be uh, would be the spoiled one, would be right, the, the bully, or needy, <laughs> uh, and uh, not at all. Um, so I think that was just a. Uh, um, a competitive thing in the womb that was going on. So, <laughs> all right. We are with screenwriter, writer, producer, showrunner of all. I mean, I've said this a few times um, with other guests. Oh, um, he's practically written every show you've ever seen on TV. <laughs> he is Mr. Peter Lankoff. Um, that is it for part one of dad cast podcast with Peter Lankoff. Peter, thank you so much for taking your time to everyone watching. Don't go anywhere because part two is going to come up in one single week where we're going to ask some more fun questions and then maybe steer a little bit clear of the dad talk and get into what Nick really wants to talk about, and that is questions regarding TV shows and movies that Peter Lankoff has produced and written and all that good stuff. Peter, thank you so much, man, and we'll see you in Thanks, just man. a few minutes. Thank, thank you for you. having me. To Check everyone watching... I'm sorry, Nick. To everyone watching worldwide, wherever you may be, uh, thank you very much. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, do all the things, and we'll catch you on next week's episode. See you.